Marie Law, founder of The Journey in Art, and today we are going to review the Artesia watercolor pad and the watercolor pencils. Now, I've already opened the watercolor pads because this is the second time that we've filmed this for your benefit because the camera is really jumpy. Um, so the only thing you really missed was me taking off this, and it just tells you that it's 32 sheets of watercolor pad, premium, um, 9x12, 140 pound paper, which is pretty standard for watercolor paper. What I liked about the way that they packaged it was they were in plastic and they were bound, well they were packaged this way, which gives you only the backs, which is nice so that way you're not like, the fronts are getting ruined. A lot of times the watercolor paper will just come like that in the pad and it's just loose. So I've spent sent it back before because the edges were damaged, but with the way they packaged it, you weren't gonna have that problem with the edges being damaged. So I'm gonna put one pad away because we don't need to. But we'll start with reviewing the paper. So I have two other brands here to review it to. One is a smaller pad and one is a larger pad. One is Strathmore watercolor paper. It's um, a 12 sheet pad and it's also 140 pound paper. And the other one is a Canson 8 by 15 um, inch pad and it is also 140 pound paper. So everything that we're going to be comparing today is the same poundage. So the Canson paper is the paper that I use most often just because it's generally the one that has the best sales and it's the most affordable and economical. I like the Strathmore more than I like the Canson because of the ridges in the paper. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. But it has really nice ridging, like graininess in the feel of the paper. So it holds the water a little bit better. Now, I don't stretch any of my watercolor paper. I don't have a need to because I'm not doing really heavy water lays over it. Um, so I've never needed to do that. But uh, I bought this one because I think it was $10 for this specific pad. It had um, 30 sheets of paper in it and I could cut it to size and that's what I've done. If I need a smaller one or a larger one, I can get that out of this and it's not, I don't have a bunch of random odds and ends left over. However, I think this one was um, $5 for one maybe two. I can't remember. It was a while ago that I bought them and I rarely ever use it just because um, it's a small pad and I have to rip the paper out of it and I just don't, like, it's not very convenient for me most of the time. But uh, I use this one the most and one of the things I really like about this is the fact that you can open it up. But the paper is not really bound in here and it falls out like pretty easily and it kind of like lops up and if you bend it all the way over then it's gonna it's gonna come out the way these did. So this is not something that you could work out of and have you know multiple pieces working out of the same book. If you bend it, it's coming out. This series also it's it's a little bit harder to to do that. Like if you bend it, it's probably gonna pop out. So with the Artesia pad, you don't have that problem. You can bend it all the way and it doesn't pop out. It's, not, it's bound really nicely. Um, really, really nice. I, love, I, I like how it's bound. Another thing about it is the ridges of that Strathmore hat that I was telling you about that I really like. The Canson watercolor paper does not have it as much as the Strath Strathmore has it. Um, I mean it still holds water really well, has nice um, water retention and it doesn't get really puffy but it does not have like really nice um, ridging the way the Strathmore does. The Artesia is not as good as Strathmore's but it is still really nice um, paper like I can, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I can see it really well sitting here and it's pretty far away from me. I hope it reflects on the camera that way, but I don't know if it will. I have somebody directing me on how to move the paper, so 
Hopefully you'll be able to see it. He's shaking his head, so I'm assuming that it's a good go. So we'll also do a comparison on each one of the sheets of paper today um, and how well they do or don't work. So the other thing we're going to be reviewing today is the Artesia watercolor pencils. I haven't opened these at all. I did remove, they had little um, tape holding them, holding the lid on, but I took it off because I have no nails and it's hard for me to take things off, so I, I spared you guys that. It's pretty nicely made that the lid isn't coming off, and I like that because a lot of things aren't, you know, they're not sturdy like that. You could actually travel with this, and I could throw it in my bag, and I really wouldn't be worried that it's going to, um, it's going to fall out. You know, like the lid's going to pop out, everything's going to come out of it. It's 48 watercolor pencils, and it was $14, I think, for this. Um, which is not a bad, bad price for 14 Oh, sorry. $10. It was $10, which is a great deal for this amount of watercolors. It has a nice, like, pad here, so um, your watercolors aren't going to color the top of your, your lid, and they're not, also not going to be breaking off because it's nice and soft. We have some really pretty colors in there see them or not but they're really pretty colors so I've done a little bit of watercolor pencil work um, the first set that I had I didn't want to put a lot of money out because I didn't know if this was something I was going to do or not so I bought a really cheap set I bought artist law from um, Michaels I'm pretty sure that's like a Michael brand I think it was like five dollars for a set of ten Maybe 14 came in it, but it definitely was number 14 pencils. Um, and the one thing I do like about the Artist Loft was the fact that on the Artist Loft, it tells you, or Artist Loft, it tells you the name, the color of the pencil. Um, after I bought these, I really liked them. I saw that you guys can't see it, but right here it has the name. It's got the brand here, and then it tells you it tells you the name, uh, the brand name, and then over here on the side it tells you what color it is. I really liked them after having them, and I wanted a nicer quality one, but I still didn't really know a whole lot about watercolor pencils. So I went online and I did a couple of different... Um, watched a couple reviews like you guys are doing right now. One of the brands that came up was called Royal. And then I went on Amazon and looked for it. I read some reviews and uh, I ended up buying a set. So what Royal doesn't do is Royal does not give you, doesn't give you the name of the color of the pencil. So I wanted to kind of compare apples to apples here with the coloring. Um, but we can't really do that apart from like a black and maybe a gray because Royal doesn't really give you that option of knowing exactly what colors you're using, which I don't like because if you're working on a piece and you write down the colors, there's no way of like, there's no way of documenting what colors you're using. You'd have to like kind of go through the thing all over again. So let's find black. Here's black here. And I really like these pencils. They're a triangular hold, which is nice, the Artesian. And it says Artesia Premium up here. And if you turn it around, it has Noor, which is black. A012, which is the actual pencil number. And that's really awesome because um, if you use one color more than another and you wanted just to buy a specific number it would be very easy to order this from our teacher that's really cool that they did that so i've also got some brushes here that i thought that we would um talk about since we were doing this today i'm going to be using my actually you know what this is an off-brand one i thought that i'd grab the shot more but it's cool it's a china brand we'll go with that so we'll start off with the Artist Loft, which is the cheapest. And I paid $10 for the Royal, so they were the same price as the Artesia, and I definitely don't have 48 pencils here, so the Artesia is still the better deal today. 
So now we're gonna compare the pencils and we will also compare them on each sheet of paper that we've already discussed. So just from looking at the watercolor pencils, with the Artist Loft and the Royal, the only real noticeable difference in appearance, apart from the layout and design, you know, of their font, is the Artist Loft has a gold tip, the Royal has got a silver um, back end. Other than that, they're they're completely designed the same way. They've got kind of like that octagon shape. Um, so they're the same pencil, essentially in build. The Artesia is a triangular shape though, and it holds really nice. It's a lot more comfortable to hold this than it is to hold either one of these pencils. So we'll start off with the cheapest pencil, which is the Artist Loft. All three of these colors are black. So I just wanna see one other thing. So, also, the other thing about Artesia, before we continue to go, is they have got a list of the colors, um, their, you know, like their number system, and then the actual color. So, that's, that's really cool. That's just, it's here on the side. So, you sort of know what you're looking for as you go along. So, here's the Artist Loft. And as I do it, you can kind of see, or maybe you can kind of see the like texture in the paper. So that's Artist Loft. And then once we wet it, it's kind of light and it doesn't really move very much. Um, It's sort of like if you were to use a, um, a regular graphite pencil and then you try to get movement out of it, it's kind of the same. The Royal, you don't have to apply much pressure, as much pressure with the Royal to get your coloring or go over quite as many times. And you know what? Let's do a comparison, dry. But it's not as dark as, yeah, if you apply more pressure, then it gets a little bit darker. So here is the Artesia. So we have the Artist Loft, the Royal, and here's the Artesia. I am doing this much lighter, not applying as much pressure as I am with the other two. It is clearly significantly darker. And then, as I said, this Artist Loft does not have much movement in body. Um, the Royal spreads much nicer, and it is darker. You can see it like spreading out. It's a darker color. And it kind of, it blends a little bit better, too. It blends more nicely. I have high hope here for the Artesia. Yeah, the Artesia's got way more pigment in it. Um, it spreads out a lot more. And it goes further. As far as blending, you know, watercolor pencils, are more precise. You have to have like a clearer thought as to what you're doing with them. They don't move the way that a color, watercolor palette would move, but there is some really nice movement inside of um, the Artesia pencils, but still a lot of nice control. So I think that the Artesia is definitely a better a better pencil altogether. That's not saying that these two for a beginner level isn't you know isn't suitable. But if you can get this set for $10, this is definitely the better deal. Even for $14, I think it's a better deal. Um, so let's see if we can find another color that's kind of like similar between them all. Also, I wanted to... This is a thicker pencil too. 
like the lead in it. Well, not the lead, but the the watercolor in it is it's thicker than either one of these. Here it is, definitely thicker. I really like the way that these came sharpened as well. Let's see if we can find another color that's kind of like similar between them all. Also, I wanted to... This is a thicker pencil too, like the lead in it. Well, not the lead, but the, the watercolor in it is, it's thicker than either one of these. Definitely thicker. I really like the way that these came sharpened. All right, so we did the black one here, and let's go ahead and do oceans, ocean blue. So, like I said earlier, the Royals' problem is that it doesn't tell you what color it, you're using. So I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate that this would at least be the closest thing to Ocean's Blue that they have in this pack um, of colors. So we will start off again with the Artist Loft. And let me come back over here and do it. So that's Artist Loft. And here we have the royal and again I'm not sure that this is oceans blue it's just that you know I gotta guess because it doesn't tell me what colors are on there and then here is the artesia actually let's do it over here because as you can see artesia goes much further than royal or artist loft does and color wise this definitely has more um green in it than artist loft or or royal does i'm going to try and make that a little bit darker but note that i had to go over that several times so here's the the spreading of artist loft Goes a little bit further than the, the black did, but I also didn't spread it as wide. I kind of kept it within the original. But it doesn't hold as pigment as well. Royal holds as pigment much nicer than um, Artist Loft does, and it goes further too. So I have really high hopes for Artesia. And I didn't have that much water on it, so. It's got really nice coloring, really nice coloring, and it goes um, a lot further than the other ones go. So this is the Royal Pencil. This is the selection that came inside that pack, just to kind of give you an idea. None of the colors are labeled. So I kind of just have to guess as I go along and I have to complete a picture and one go with these pencils. Their saving graces, they're definitely a better quality than the Artist Loft. The Artist Loft, and this is two packs, so kind of divide that in half, sorry guys. Um, but this is two packs and they're not a bad starting pencil and if you have kids that you want to start off in watercolor pencil um it's very economic but for ten dollars you really can't go go wrong with the artesia um i mean for twenty dollars you can set your kids up for a while unless they're just like kind of wasting paper and running through it but that's something you have to teach yourself and if you're you know you're starting off as an artist or if you are an artist and you're trying to find something more economical than some of the other watercolor pencils out there but are still really good quality 
Um, this is definitely an excellent way to go. It gives you a huge amount of variety. The colors are really pretty. They have really fun names with them. The watercolor paper is really nice. I like the watercolor paper. I'm gonna do a really quick painting down here so that you can kind of like get ideas um, on what, what it's like. And one of the things I really like about watercolors pencils is the amount of control that you have with them and that they were so easy and nice just to blend with kind of like regular um regular pencils but I love balloons and it is really easy to do balloons so that color was periwinkle and I like periwinkle this is ocean blue to kind of give you an idea let's see here let's do this pink this pink is really pretty um, this is peony that's a cool color I would think it would be kind of like difficult to compare a lot of these I'm interested to see what the indigo is like A really nice deep color in there. This is um, lime. And we'll do one darker bright green. This one is forest green. We'll come over here and we'll do it over here. So, that being said, a nice first layer you don't want to do um, you don't want your colors going too dark when you're doing watercolors because it's a little more difficult to to lift and to cover they're not as forgiving as a lot of the other colors that are that are out there well not other colors but other paints that are out there like acrylic paint you can just cover it oil paint you can just blend it or cover it with them watercolors once it's there who likes watercolor pencils really nice little watercolor pencils so some colors you're going to have to do more work and more play in um, because they're lighter, but that's, that's with all watercolors. So I really like them. I think that they were really good buy, and I really like the paper. Um, I mean, like, no puffing, nothing, just to, like, even, I'm still not getting any, like, warping in it. Yeah, it's really nice. No bubbling. And it's not... It, it's a loose, it's a loose pad, so there is no, um, there's no tape or anything holding it down to help it not warp, so it's a really nice pad, definitely, like, worth the money. So I would definitely recommend purchasing these, um, and these pencils, these pencils are awesome, I like them all. They're very comfortable to use, they're definitely more comfortable than the Octagon. So once again, these are the Artesia, whoops, the Artesia watercolor pencils premium. Um, I've used a couple of their other um, products and I'm really happy with everything I've used from this company so far. There's some other stuff coming in this week, so we'll go through a couple more um, reviews shortly to see what the other things are like. Hmm. Okay, there we go. So, Artesia 48 Watercolor Pencils Premium 
triangular grip, rich and vibrant colors, and I would agree with that statement. There's a little swatch panel on the back of it. Oh, and look at that. Um, join Artesia Club and get 20% off your next purchase. So, um, I really like it. It's an awesome like product. It's easy to travel with. This pad is really nice. It's, you know, really durable. It's easy to work with. I messed that up, but it was just for fun, so we're cool. But definitely, definitely recommend getting this. So I hope that my review has helped you with the three brands of watercolor pencils that we've gone through today, um, some of the paper we've discussed, and this is the Artesia Acid-Free Cold Press Paper, glue-bound, ideal for watercolor techniques and mixed media. Um, there's 32 sheets in each pad, pad, and it did come with two pads, and it's 140 pound paper. So it definitely was worth, worth it. So I hope this helps you out and come back for the next video.